in five days, I'll be on stage in front of 150 medical doctors debating a vegan. And in preparation for this, I've been studying now for seven months, hardcore. And what I'm learning is that I've known what vegans say since 2017, and I know why they say it, but I decided to dive in deeper and see if there's something I'm missing. What I'm learning is that medical doctors say the same things as vegans say. Vegans will say beef will kill you, and medical doctors say beef will kill you if you eat too much. So um, when you look at the research on this, there's all kinds of uh, observational studies, which are not science, they're surveys. Observational surveys say that meat is bad, but that's not scientific, it's not a true statement, and there's no scientific clinical trial, there's no experiment that exists that proves that meat is bad, that causes any disease. So having said that, there's some science, actual experiments, that show that meat is good, the ketogenic diet is good. As a matter of fact, it is the best diet for reversing heart disease, cardiovascular atherosclerosis, ischemic heart disease. It is the best diet. And this research was done centered around a guy named Dr. Steve Finney, and he's been studying the ketogenic low-carb diet since 1976, and he's a researcher. And it also involves um, some other of his associates, and one in particular named Forsyth published research in 2008. And then Finney got some funding from private citizens because he was getting funding from the NIH, and that comes with strings, and you have to obey what they demand. So he got out of the unethical funding of medical research through the National Institute of Health. He got private funding. He went into the free market. That's where you see most of the ethics is in the free market. I've been in the free market now for 20 years. And that company that he started is called Virta, V-I-R-T-A. And they've done some amazing research. And we're, let's go over three graphs. And in these three graphs, you'll see the difference of a very low-carbohydrate ketogenic diet compared to usual care, low fat. And you'll see the improvements with the people on the ketogenic diet. This is the study from 2008 in the journal Lipids from Forsyth. And this is seven inflammatory markers dropping in the red on the very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. And then the blue is a low fat diet. So these inflammatory markers include interleukin-6, interleukin-8, TNF alpha, there are seven that drop tremendously. And so the low fat diet doesn't do this. Now there are other inflammatory markers that were measured. There were seven more. And these other seven did not change between the two diets. There was no difference between the two diets. There is a thing called the p-value, p as in Paul. The p-value tells you how true this study is and you want that number to be very low, maybe below uh, 0 0.05, for example. And the lower that number is, the more true that this is. So the, this p-value on this study was 10 to the minus 16. Like it's a super low number. It means that the physiology, when you go into ketosis, reduces inflammation. It's baked into our DNA. This is how the body works. If you want to reduce inflammation, get into ketosis. Now, you can do that with fasting, with the ketogenic diet, but 10 to the minus 16 p-value is practically unheard of in physiology, nutrition, uh, those kinds of studies. So this is an amazing study. I have one more graph from this study. This is the same study. It was 40 people, clinical trial, and they compared the low-carbohydrate diet in red versus the low-fat diet in blue and the results. And the green boxes indicate what's known as metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, overweight, and the parameters defining high um, metabolic syndrome. But let's go all the way to the left, and we have the percent change here on the left. And so the body mass dropped more with the low-carb diet than the low-fat diet. Abdominal fat dropped more with the low-carb diet. Triglycerides dropped more with the low-carb diet. And here we have HDL, which is the quote-unquote healthy uh, cholesterol, and that rose more with the low-carb diet. Here's ApoB. The ApoB is like the worst sort of 
lipid or cholesterol that you can imagine, it is on LDL. And when this is oxidized, then you get heart disease. So in cardiology, they say oxidized ApoB is the worst thing. But since ApoB is on LDL, they say LDL is the worst thing. But since they can't control whether or not it's oxidized, they just say total LDL is the worst thing. But the truth is, it's total oxidized ApoB. That's the worst thing. And that drops more in the low-carb diet than the low-fat diet. And here we have glucose, the last green box, dropped more with the low-carb diet than the low-fat diet. We also have these insulin factors and HOMA-IR, and that's another way to measure insulin resistance. And then what's interesting all the way to the right is total saturated fatty acids. Low-carb diets drop total saturated fatty acids more than double the low-fat diet. If you want to lower your total saturated fatty acids in your blood, eat saturated fat. Get off the carbs. Eat meat. Stop the carbs. But this is the greatest find, in my opinion, and it debunks a lot of naysayers who think that meat is bad and saturated fat is bad. If you want to drop your blood saturated fat, then you have to eat saturated fat. And you have to avoid the carbohydrates because when you eat carbohydrates, your body burns that first and then it burns fat second. So get rid of the carbohydrates and then start burning fat and then your saturated fat in your blood goes down. Those two graphs were from 2008. Nobody has debunked that. This study is, ends in 2019 and it's like 262 people, two years on the ketogenic diet. They didn't do nutrition logs. They didn't write down their diet. They tested their blood for ketones and 74% retention over two years, which is phenomenal. Everybody had the status of nutritional ketosis as measured in their blood. And nobody's debunked this either. So for my preparation for this debate with the vegan, I'm looking for, the, in my Google searches, YouTube searches, Verda trial debunk or Verda study quackery or Verda health uh, fake. Nobody's even touched this study because it's so well done and you can't argue this, you can't debate this. So the blue is the results of the Verda uh, care. And then on the left, we have usual care, which is a low fat diet and medications. And I'm gonna read off some of these to you. So at the very upper left corner, it says 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And it improved by about 10% with the Verda care clients. The blood pressures in the blue here, uh, more improvement with Verda. And then we also have triglycerides and then different triglyceride ratios to HDL, total cholesterol, HDL. All these things are better. Their blood lipids got so much better. And then here we have a reduction in VLDL, an increase in HDL, an increase in um, other forms of HDL. And here we have a reduction of ApoB. That's the one that I mentioned is like the worst, the worst lipid. It reduced more with Verda and it actually um, did not change with the low uh, fat diet. Here's the LDLs dropping more here, here, and here. And there's one more I'm gonna get to at the very end. And then here's C-reactive protein, and that's the most common marker for inflammation. Dropped tremendously on the low carb diet, and then increased with the low fat diet. And then here we have white blood cell count. Now, I'm gonna do another video about white blood cell count being indicative of heart disease regardless of cholesterol numbers. And the higher your white blood cell count is, the greater chance you're gonna have heart problems. And what, what does white blood cell count mean? It means inflammation, injury, or it could mean infection. Probably 80% of the time, it's an infection. And a few months ago, I've done a series of videos about how heart disease and diabetes can be an infection. So here's diabetes markers, A1C, glucose, insulin, insulin resistance. And these are all improved more on the ketogenic diet than the low fat diet. And of course, weight, better uh, improvements with rate, 30 pounds loss on average for these 262 people on this trial over two years. So the last thing I wanna talk about is this LDLC, and that's the LDL cholesterol particle and the total count and with the VertiCare, it actually went up. And with the low-fat diet, it went down. What does this mean? 
well, cardiologists would say, it doesn't matter that everything else got better. It doesn't matter that you're exercising more, that you lost weight, you lost fat, you gained muscle, and every insulin marker, glucose, inflammation, everything got better. None of that matters because LDL went up. up. Well, the truth is LDL is part of the immune system and it helps the body heal. It fuels the wound healing cycle. So when you have damage to your tissue, whether it's outside the skin or inside the body, there's four stages that the body goes through to heal that tissue. And LDL fuels that when you're on a low carb diet. If you're not on a low carb diet, you're eating a lot of sugar grains, what fuels your immune system? Sugar, but sugar also fuels the infections. So when you go on a low carb diet, you're now starving the infections and you switch your fuel from sugar to fat. LDL is a bus that carries that fuel. That fuel is called triglycerides. So that's why triglycerides drop so much on this graph. So there was that study that was just done where they took athletes who had a very high LDL count and they're on a low carb diet for five years and their placking was equal to people with lower LDL. And the conclusion was just because you have high LDL doesn't mean you get heart disease. So we can't be all afraid of LDL cholesterol like we used to be back in the 1980s. Like it's been 40 years now. It's been a long time and we have so much more information. Two studies that I just presented to you are the best of the best of all nutrition, showing you that a low carb diet beats out low fat diets. And not a single person has ever debunked these two trials. That first study was presented at a series called Low Carb Breckenridge in 2018. It's on YouTube. You can find it. And then a few years later, that Verta Health study was thoroughly presented at Low Carb Denver by Steve Finney. So if you ever get into a debate online about diets, go to these studies. I'll put the links below. I'll put the video links below too so you can see the presentations by Dr. Finney. And keep that in mind and tell your opponent in the debate, debunk these keto studies. Ketosis is the best thing to reduce cardiovascular disease and reduce inflammation, which can lead to more heart disease.